Hey everyone, I'm Adam Harrington. I'm exploring the woods today in search of one very, very special plant. And this plant is known as Golden Seal. Its Latin name is Hydrastis canadensis. There are a few other common names to describe this plant, including yellow root, orange root, and yellow pacoon. But most people know this plant as Golden Seal. And this is a medicinal plant that maybe you've actually taken before in supplement form. Some immune boosting formulas contain Golden Seal. And the history of Golden Seal goes back centuries here in North America with the Native Americans and also with some of the early settlers. However, where I live in Pennsylvania, this plant isn't that common. It's really not that easy to find. I don't come across it too often. It's not a very rare plant, it's just not that common. And it's actually listed in Pennsylvania as a vulnerable plant, meaning this is a plant in danger of population decline. However, I have seen Golden Seal here in the past. With any luck, we're going to find it today. And I'd like to introduce you to this plant and teach you some things that maybe you didn't know about this very, very special plant. So come on, let's go see what we can find. Okay, so here it is. This is Golden Seal. You can see it's kind of abundant right in this particular spot. There are a lot of other plants in this area. I see some red trillium, I see some wild ginger, I see Christmas fern. There are some geraniums here as well. So there's a lot of different plants, but in this particular spot, I'm seeing a lot of this Golden Seal plant. Now, in the latter half of the 1800s, Golden Seal suffered dramatic decreases in abundance due to over-harvesting for the commercial trade. And as I mentioned here in Pennsylvania, this is state listed as vulnerable. And as of 2013, Golden Seal is actually listed as endangered, threatened, or vulnerable in at least 10 states, if not more. Now, Golden Seal does inhabit Eastern North America and inhabits many states. And it's actually most stable in the core of its range, which is the Ohio River Valley. Now, Golden Seal inhabits rich, shaded hardwood forests in association with various trees, including sugar maple trees, tulip poplar trees, American beech trees, and white ash trees. So Hydrastis canadensis golden seal is a member of the buttercup family, which is the Ranunculaceae family. And if you're looking for this plant, here's what you want to look for. So golden seal is a perennial herb with a single hairy stem that stands erect about 7 to 18 inches tall. Now these leaves are lobed and wrinkled, and they become smoother as the year progresses. The flower of golden seal blooms late April into late May. Now it takes four to five years for a golden seal plant to reach sexual maturity. This is the point at which it produces flowers. If you look closely at each flower, it looks like it has a bunch of petals, but these are actually stamens. So there are numerous stamens, which are the male reproductive structures in the flower. It's about 40 of them. Then there's about 10 pistils, which are the female reproductive structures of the flower. Now the flowers can be cross-pollinated, and they can be cross-pollinated by insects, but cross-pollination isn't necessary because golden seal flowers can self-pollinate. And the fruits mature in the summer months and they resemble a raspberry. Now the rhizome of golden seal has a dull brown exterior and a bright yellow core. And that's where that name golden seal comes from, or yellow root, or orange root, or yellow pacoon. They all refer to this bright yellow core in the rhizome of golden seal. Now as far as reproduction, golden seal is a clonal species. So it reproduces mainly vegetatively. Though to a lesser extent, it can reproduce via seed propagation as well. Now why would golden seal, which doesn't really stand out amongst all these other understory plants, it kind of just blends right in. Why would this plant be considered endangered, vulnerable, or threatened in at least 10 states here in North America? Well, there are multiple reasons. Number one would be habitat destruction. And especially Canadian populations of golden seal, when we look at that, we see that only 5% of the forested habitat that supports golden seal populations remains in Canada, only 5%. We're also looking at decline in habitat quality. We're looking at deer browsing. We're looking at invasive species, and especially where I live in Pennsylvania, deer browsing and invasive species go hand in hand. Wherever there's a lot of white-tailed deer in a given area, there are also a lot of invasive species. Gas industry development, that's another big one here in Pennsylvania. And last but certainly not least, wild collection of golden seal. Now, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, golden seal is a medicinal plant whose history goes back centuries here in North America. And whenever we look at the Native American ethnobotanical records, we see, for example, that the Cherokee mixed golden seal with bear fat to repel insects. Other cultures use golden seal as an eye rinse to treat eye infections. 
Throughout the 1700s, the colonists and some of the early settlers of the 1800s used golden seal as a digestive aid and treatment for skin inflammation. And this is why in the latter half of the 1800s, golden seal suffered dramatic decreases in abundance due to over-harvesting for the commercial trade. So what is it about golden seal particularly that makes it so special? What are the medicinal compounds? What are the medicinal actions that are attributed to golden seal? Well, whenever we look at the golden seal plant, we see that it contains a pretty impressive phytochemistry. There are numerous alkaloid compounds found within this plant. And alkaloids are nitrogen bearing compounds that contain pharmacological activity. Whenever we look at golden seal, there are three that are being heavily studied right now. Berberine, hydrastine, and canidine. So we're gonna look at the research in a second, but before we get into that, I just wanna throw it out there that I do not condone the wild collection or wild harvesting or foraging of golden seal in any of these endangered, threatened, or vulnerable populations, especially here in Pennsylvania. There are some good alternatives to golden seal. There's a really good one, which I'm going to mention in just a couple seconds, so stay tuned for that. Also, if you look at golden seal supplements online or golden seal containing supplements, either tinctures or capsules or other formulas, you go to a health food store and you find golden seal. A lot of these companies are actually utilizing cultivated golden seal. So that's something to look into as well. So let's get into the research on golden seal. In the journal Planta Medica in 2001, Researchers found that extracts of golden seal showed antibacterial activity against two gram-positive bacterial strains, Staphylococcus aureus and Streptococcus sanguis, also against two gram-negative bacterial strains, E. coli and Pseudomonas aeruginosa. In the same journal, Planta Medica in 2003, researchers discovered that extracts of golden seal showed antimicrobial activity when evaluated against the oral pathogen Streptococcus mutans and Fusobacterium nucleatum. So Streptococcus mutans is a gram-positive bacteria which can lead to tooth decay and Fusobacterium nucleatum is a gram-negative bacteria which can lead to periodontitis and gingivitis. So moving away from the antimicrobial activities of golden seal and into the cardiovascular health section of golden seal, we see that golden seal can shine in this area as well. So in the Journal of Lipid Research in 2006, researchers discovered, and I quote them, in conclusion, we have discovered that golden seal a Native American medicinal plant has strong cholesterol and lipid lowering effects. Golden seal reduces cholesterol and lipid accumulations in plasma as well as in liver through the actions of multiple bioactive compounds that work synergistically. This work opens the way for a potential alternative therapeutic intervention for hyperlipidemia. Now those concentrations of those alkaloids, hydrastine, canadine, and berberine are highest in the rhizomes of golden seal. So that's why a lot of people are after the rhizomes of golden seal, not necessarily the aerial portions. However, those compounds can be found to a lesser extent in the aerial portions, but most of the research being conducted on golden seal is being conducted on the rhizomes or extracts from the rhizomes. So now that we looked at some of the medicinal research, we know that golden seal has been utilized for centuries. This plant seems pretty promising. What are we supposed to do if we want some of this medicinal action inside of our bodies? Well, there's a good alternative, and it's an alternative that probably should be dug up if you can find it. And I'm sure you'll have no problem finding it if it grows in an area where you live. And this is a plant, it's a shrub known as Japanese barberry, Berberis thunbergii. This is an incredibly invasive plant, a very aggressive plant that was brought over in the 1800s, and it's been spreading ever since then. Japanese barberry is a dense, woody shrub with numerous arching, spine-bearing branches. And this shrub produces red fruits in the fall. Now, Japanese barberry contains berberine. And it contains a lot of berberine. If we just look at the root system, we see that it's bright yellow, kind of like the root system of golden seal. And that's reflective of its berberine content. Just looking at the genus name, Berberis, that alludes to its berberine content. So what's so special about berberine? Well, berberine, in numerous studies, has been shown to have antioxidant properties, anti-inflammatory properties, neuroprotective and cardiovascular protective effects. And in humans, its lipid lowering and insulin resistance improving actions have been demonstrated in numerous randomized clinical trials. If you don't believe me, maybe you'll listen to the words of these researchers who published a study in pharmaceutical biology in 2008. And they concluded, these results suggest that Berberis thunbergii, which is Japanese barberry, is a potential substitute for golden seal with respect to its berberine content. Now it's actually really easy to make a medicine out of Japanese barberry, and that's what I have with me right here. This is a tincture that I made not too long ago. And you can see that it's kind of yellowish or amber colored. And that yellow color is symbolic of the berberine that's found in here. And also, it kind of tastes a bit bitter but it also tastes slightly like carrots in a way, like it's almost like a member of the APACA family or the carrot family, but it's not a member of that family. 
but it kind of has that taste whenever you do taste it. So as I mentioned, it's kind of easy to make a tincture out of Japanese barberry. You want to harvest the roots during the root season, which would be late fall through about early spring. Then you could dry those roots, and you can make an alcohol extraction out of it. Now, if you want the berberine out of Japanese barberry, which I imagine you would if you're interested in these medicinal benefits, berberine is not a water-soluble compound, so you need an alcohol in order to pull out that berberine. And the higher the proof, the better to pull out that berberine. You could tincture for about six weeks, you could strain it out, then you can have your very own Japanese barberry tincture. So just to reiterate, if you're looking for a good alternative for golden seal, consider looking into one of the most incredibly invasive plants here in North America, which is Japanese barberry, Berberis thunbergii. And if the medicine might suit you, if you think that might be for you, consider making a medicine out of it because you will be doing our woods a massive service, an incredible service in more ways than one. Okay, we talked about a lot of different things today, including golden seal, hydrastis canadensis. We talked about Japanese barberry, Berberis thunbergii. We talked about berberine, canadine, hydrastine, and a lot of other different things. And so I encourage you to explore your woods, see if you do have golden seal where you live. And I'll bet you do have Japanese barberry and maybe some other berberine-containing plants because it's a pretty common compound in the plant kingdom. And if you do an online search, you'll see which other plants contain berberine. Thanks so much for watching this video. As always, I truly appreciate it. Feel free to subscribe to the Learn Your Land YouTube channel. You can head on over to learnyourland.com, sign up for the email newsletter so we can stay in touch. Also, we can stay in touch via social media at Learn Your Land. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next video.